Turning now to some politics, a GOP dust-up kicking off this week's efforts to unseat House Speaker John Boehner making headlines as the new Congress convened. Called an in-house rebellion as a number of conservative dissidents opting to support candidates to run against Boehner for the post. In the end, Mr. Boehner prevailed, but not without a bitter fallout of party infighting. Joining us now, one of the members who ran against the Speaker, Texas Congressman Louis Gohmert. Welcome, Congressman. Great to have you here today. Good to be had, Uma. Thank you. <laughs> well, you weren't uh, the winner in this one. Mr. Boehner was elected in the first round, garnering 216 right. votes. Republicans needed 29 votes to force a second round, and they got 24. You got three of those votes, with the other candidates sharing the rest. The reason for the revolt, you and others feel that the Speaker has done little to cut spending and fight the President's immigration and health care policies. Do you believe that he now grasps the frustration that exists within the party about his leadership? Well... He did win the, the race. Uh, he was making some frantic calls on Tuesday morning uh, because they realized, whoa, he, was, he stood a good chance of, of losing. They may say now they, they weren't worried, but they were sure making calls. But he won, and now the issue is moving forward. And, and by the way, I knew, I mean, I may look crazy, but Uma, I knew that when I stepped up, as, as I was urged to do by some of our little group, uh, that I was going to make some of my colleagues mad, some of the other uh, members of Congress. I knew that. And I knew that once I announced that chances were good, I'd be the last person they would elect if we went back into a con uh, conference. But the goal was to get the votes that we needed to throw it to a second ballot, and if that didn't work, to a third. But somewhere between the second and third, we would have ended up having a conference and... Uh, at some point, the speaker would have realized that he couldn't win, and we would have, it wouldn't have been me, but there would have been a compromise that the entire conference would have agreed on. But as it is, he won, so now we go forward. And, and actually, Uma, we had a very good conference uh, yesterday. And uh, again, we have a bill coming up Tuesday. I got uh, the bill. I didn't get a chance to see it till 1 a.m. this morning, and I haven't read it. I was kind of tired from the week, uh, but but uh, I got five hours of sleep last night. I'm ready to go. I will read it this weekend, and if it's as promised, then I expect you're going to see an overwhelming number of Republicans, and I would expect to pick up some Democrats Tuesday on this bill because it's a it's a but the, the principles are very good. I understand but that, but I'm asking you, is, but I'm asking you, do you think the speaker got the message from the conservative wing there that there are some real yeah. problems that he needs to address from members who see that who are saying that his leadership needs to be bolstered with some additional uh, safe, safety, you know, some safeguards and some guarantees yeah. that will and adhere I, to the platforms that you guys are pushing? Yeah, in fact. Um, the things we actually promised, wow, what a notion that we'll actually do what we promised. And I think you'll see more of that. And I would encourage uh, you and Fox News to be asking the speaker to be on because one of the complaints was that the speaker would come to conference and would say, you guys have got to, you know, tighten your belt and, and just really take the big jump and vote for this bill. And here are the reasons why. And then he would go to his office instead of going on television and explaining over and over why people needed to make that vote. So I expect you'll see him getting on uh, Has Sunday Has the Speaker shows reached out to often. you personally to call you since that vote happened? No. Um, he, uh, he did when I stuck out my hand as he was going down the aisle, shake my hand. So, you know, it's a good start. Uh, but I think he's gotten a message, and I think you'll see – more of this. There are consequences to the omnibus passing. We we gave the president everything he wants, and we're very concerned about homeland security, especially now. And so um, we'll see. The president says he'll veto the bill we pass, and then and then Uma, that's where the, we'll have the real test of leadership. Uh, whether our leadership will help us stand our ground. And, and fight for our homeland security that we need so desperately, or are they going to cave again? And I'm hoping that the speaker got the message. Hey, you know, that hope springs eternal, even after a loss. You get up, you dust yourself off, and you move on. There and you I go. think we're All ready right. to do that. Well, terrific. Thank you, Congressman, for joining us today. We really appreciate Thank it. You. From the great state Thank of you, Texas. Thank you, it's always good to be with you. Tell Thank the folks you. in Texas hi for me.